Hi guys, this is the third part of my presentation. In this video, I will explain our journal paper published in IEEE Transactions on Network and Service Management. In this work, we proposed a fuzzy logic based workload orchestrator for multi tier edge computing architectures. So, what is a multi tier edge computing architecture? As you can see in the figure, we commonly have three tiers in this architecture. The first one is the data generation tier where mobile users are available. Mobile users utilize WLAN access technologies to access edge resources. In the second tier, we have edge related resources, mainly micro cloud edge servers, which are connected via metropolitan area network. And finally, in the third tier, we have global cloud server. Okay, now let's look at our workload orchestration flow. The task of loading is the main idea behind the edge computing. The workload orchestrator deals with the tasks of loaded by the end user devices. In our work, when, how, and what the offload problems are not considered. We assume that the tasks are already offloaded by the end user devices and we are trying to solve where to offload problem. We can also call this problem as resource provisioning. So what are the options for the target processing unit? Well, we have three options for the case study. The first option is offloading to the nearest edge server. We call this server as the local edge server. In this case, the mobile device can access the target server with one hop. The second option is offloading to another edge server connected to metropolitan area network. In this case, we access the edge server with two hops over WLAN and MAN. The third option is offloading to the cloud server. In this case, we access the target server with three hops over WLAN, MAN and WAN. We assume that this architecture has a fiber-like internet connection providing a broadband access via a router connected to the MAN. You can see all three options in this figure. Option 1 2 and 3. Now I want to explain our fuzzy logic based solution. Our solution consists of two stages. In the first stage, we try to find the best candidate server among the edge servers. In the second stage, we select either the candidate edge server or the cloud server. You may ask why do you use two stages for this decision making system? I will explain the reason after giving some more details about fuzzy logic. First of all, I want to address why we chose fuzzy logic. Actually, workload orchestration is an MP hard problem with many inputs and outputs. In addition, this problem is online, so we do not know the incoming request in advance. As a result, we cannot apply conventional optimization tools like Groby and Ciplex. Edge computing environments are very dynamic and the states of the resources changes very rapidly. So we need to use a problem solving technique that can handle such uncertainty. Fuzzy logic is one of the best alternatives for rapidly changing uncertain systems. It can handle a multi-constraint optimization process in such dynamic environments by using if-then rules. It also has low complexity, which is very important for online algorithms. If you are familiar with fuzzy logic systems, you probably saw this figure before. The fuzzy logic controller has three main steps. Here the creeps term stands for the numerical value. In this domain, it is called as creeps value. The fuzzifier 
transforms the Greeks value into fuzzy values by using the membership functions. Inputs and outputs of the inference engine are non-numerical linguistic variables. Instead of using the numerical values, fuzzy logic system uses variables from the natural language such as low, medium, high, very high, and etc. The fuzzifier transforms the fuzzy output value coming from the inference steps to a Gribbs value again. As a result, we obtain a numerical value. The main elements of the fuzzy logic controller are the membership functions and the fuzzy rules. We use the membership functions to quantify a linguistic term. For each fuzzy variable, a set of membership functions are defined. A fuzzy rule is a simple if-then rule with a condition and a conclusion. Let me give an example of this. The membership functions can be in different forms, such as triangular, trapezoidal, Gaussian, or singleton. We chose the triangular form, which is the most commonly used one, due to having low complexity on fuzzy logic controller steps. In this figure, you can see the membership functions for the fuzzy input variable delta, which is average VM utilization. We have three linguistic terms for this input, which are light, normal, and heavy. As I said, in fuzzy logic, we don't use numerical value. Instead, we have a degree of membership. For example, if the virtual machine utilization on edge server is 86 here, the, per, uh, the degree of membership value of light is 0. The degree of membership function for normal, normal is 0.1 and for heavy is 0.4. In this slide, you can see a part of fuzzy rules from our fuzzy rule set. Actually, the inference is used to evaluate and combine the fuzzy rules from the fuzzy rule base. This step is the most crucial part of the fuzzy logic controller. Determining the fuzzy rules is very critical since the overall system performance highly depends on these rules. The result of some rules is self-evident and finding the result is easy, however, some of them are not. In our study, the relatively better fuzzy rule set is empirically found and the best rule combination in the experiments are used. After this brief introduction for fuzzy logic, let me share our fuzzy input variables. For the first stage, we have three input variables, which are Metropolitan Area Network Delay, List Loaded Remote Edge CPU Utilization, Local Edge CPU Utilization. For the second stage, we have four input variables, which are Wide Area Network Bandwidth, Task Length, Delay Sensitivity of Task, and virtual machine utilization. Okay, now I can say why we have two stages. In this work, we use three linguistic terms, such as low, medium, and high, for our fuzzy input variables. If we try to solve the overall problem at once, we need to consider seven input variables which will yield more than 2,000 rules. Managing that much rule is very challenging, actually. Therefore, we divided this problem into two sub-problems and deal with much fewer rules. That's why we use two, st two stages. As competitors, we have four algorithms. We found another fuzzy logic-based solution from the literature which is proposed by Flores et al. Some input variables of their fuzzy logic were already available in our scenario, but one of them was missing. We integrated their fuzzy logic-based approach to our scenario. The other competitors are conventional approaches that are using a threshold to make the decision.
bandwidth base uses wider area network bandwidth to decide to offload to the cloud. If wider area network bandwidth is higher 5 megabit per second, then this algorithm offloads to cloud. VM utilization based uses the average VM utilization of edge server to offload edge servers. If average VM utilization is less than 80%, then it offloads to the least loaded edge server. The hybrid application applies both bandwidth and virtual machine utilization approaches by using end operator. Well, let's have a look at our experiment and its results. We simulated a university campus where the mobile users move according to the nomadic mobility model. There are three different place types based on their attractiveness level. The red circles are the most attractive places and this place has more dwell time than the others. On the other hand, the blue circles are the less attractive place. So the dwell time is very short in these locations. I will give the details of the simulation parameters later. The nomadic mobility model is given in this figure. In this model, users change their location after they spend some time in their current location. The probability of selecting any place is the same, but the dwell time is different. So after some time, some places become crowded. We use four applications with different characteristics. Their usage ratio, task interarrival rate, delay sens sensitivity, virtual machine utilization, task length, and input-output data size are different based on their characteristics. For example, the compute intensive application generates big tasks in around 20 seconds, but the health application generates small tasks more frequently. We determine these values based on the other studies from the literature. In order to make the network model more realistic, we use the result of an empirical study for wide area network and WLAN delays. We perform this experiment with real devices and you can see the average bandwidth based on the number of clients using the network simultaneously. Other important simulation parameters are listed in this table. I don't want to explain each of the parameters. I want to highlight that we have 14 edge servers and one cloud server in this simulation. The cloud server has 10 times more computing power than the edge servers. OK, let's switch to the results. The average unsuccessful task ratio is one of the most crucial performance criteria in computer network design. The average failed task percentage is given in this figure. As you can see, our fuzzy-based solution provides the best performance. The reason behind this result will be more clear with the pie charts given in the following slide. Here, the distribution of the task failure reasons is shown. We can ignore the task failure due to the mobility, since it cannot be prevented by the edge orchestrator. And the amount of failed tasks is similar for all algor algorithms. Except for the mobility-based task failures, a task can be executed. Uh, sorry, a task cannot be executed if the utilization of a virtual machine is too high to accept offloaded task, or if the network bandwidth is not sufficient to transfer either the input or the output of the task. As you can see, the bandwidth-based solution loses most of the tasks because of metropolitan area network. After some time, the wide area network bandwidth becomes congested. And this algorithm of loss tasks to the edge server. This causes too much packet loss on man. On the other hand, the utilization-based method starts sending tasks to the cloud after edge servers become congested. In this case, we observe too much packet loss on wide area network. 
Flores et al. approach is a bit better, but still it cannot use the resources efficiently. We can see that our approach can balance both computing and networking resources better than its competitor. Another important performance metric is the service time. The average service time of the algorithms are shown in this figure. The service time includes both the network delay and the processing time. When the system load is light, the fuzzy-based approach provides the best results. As expected, the utilization-based approach pro provides the worst result due to the wide area network delay. When it comes to the overloaded region, the Flores and utilization-based approaches provide better results because they offload most of the task to the edge. But don't forget that they have roughly two times higher task failure compared to our solution. We can serve more tasks than the competitors when the system is heavily loaded. So our service time performance is slightly higher in the overloaded region. As I said, the service time is composed of the processing time and the networking delay. You can see the proportion of the processing and networking delay for edge and cloud servers. As expected, in the edge servers, we have minimal processing time but high networking delay. When it comes to the cloud server, the results is the opposite. Let me finalize this part here. Actually, there are more detailed results in our paper, but I want to stop here and switch to our next contribution. If you want to see the other result, you can read our paper. Thanks for watching. I hope it will be helpful for you.